Hello and welcome back to a second episode of Polychat. This is Sam Kim coming to you live from East Sedhawkit. So, welcome. Glad you're here. Let's talk about recent events. I'm going to be covering two uh, this week that I found uh, were very interesting, actually. Uh, Number one, uh, the German federal election. Uh, and this is uh, this part of the program is going to be more of a response towards uh, Riley Brown when he was uh, talking about um, the fact that like you know this wasn't a complete victory for the far right. But like you know uh, if you look at um, the results, so you could see uh, the results here. Uh, so if you look at the results, uh, you could see that in general, this was actually a pretty bad election for uh, Merkel. Like, you know, yeah, still she is the largest party, but only by six points compared to the, uh, compared to the, um, uh, Social Democratic Party, um, she, I mean, the alternative for Deutschland surprisingly got at least 91 seats. Um, in terms of the Free Democratic Party, who wasn't even in, like, you know, who didn't even have seats in the last parliament. Like, these two parties, uh, the Free Democrats lost their seats in the last election, but the alternative for Deutschland, they never even made it to parliament. They are now the third largest party. So if you think about it, if you look at the uh, total seat count here, which I think is pretty interesting, uh, which I'll uh, pull up better so uh, we could uh, see this. Um, If you look at the uh, seats, you could actually see that, like if you look at the seat count here of the... uh, parties that actually got into parliament you could see clearly that Merkel's party 200 seats social democratic 153 radical right alternative for Deutschland party they got 94 and now as you can clearly see Merkel doesn't have an outright majority she needs to form a coalition now who is she going to do this coalition with well she could always do it with her uh, with her friends at the CSU they've already agreed that they'll be part of a coalition although they want to adopt more uh, right-leaning policies so that um, they can get more voters the problem is I don't think Merkel can form an effective government uh, because the Free Democrats said they won't form an alliance with the Greens. The Social Democrats, who uh, were with the CDU and the CSU uh, in a grand coalition, they said that they will not um, assist Merkel this time. They will be the opposition. Alternative for Germany, like, you know, their entire campaign was based on, like, you know, how Merkel is such a bad chancellor. So. The only options that Merkel really has is to form a coalition with the Greens and the FDP. But that's even impossible because the FDP and the Greens hate each other. The FDP is actually moderately Eurosceptic, and the Greens are uh, Euronationalists. They believe in more uh, integration with the uh, EU. And even like, you know, if the Greens and the FDP agreed, the CSU would probably break out, break up or break away from the CDU for one reason. They do not want Merkel to uh, have this power. They do not want uh, all this. So what they need is they don't want the uh, migrant crisis to continue. So what they decided to do, what uh, in my opinion is the best thing to do, to placate um, most of her base, would be, like, you know, in my opinion, even though, like, you know, the AFD hates Merkel, 
Merkel could compromise on her migrant policy, uh, put a cap on the number of migrants, force other nations in the EU to kind of contribute, like France and uh, uh, and uh, not the UK, but Italy um, could definitely, well, not just Italy, like, you know, force Norway, Sweden to accept more migrants. And then she could form a coalition with the alternative for Deutschland, the Free Democratic Party, and she'll have her CSU. Because if that doesn't happen, uh, if she doesn't make those changes in migrant policy, most likely the CSU is going to leave her. Or more voters are going to leave the CSU and head for the alternative for Germany, thus rendering the CDU uh, to have a defeat. So basically what Merkel is facing right now is either political suicide or uh, complying with um, what her party wants. And in my opinion, I think, you know, uh, she should. Um, I mean, after six, uh, after like 16 or something years as chancellor, I mean, you, you kind of need to retire at this point. So, I mean, you know, just a suggestion. Uh, form a coalition with the FDP, the CSU, and the alternative for Deutschland, and then she can probably get... A, uh, a lot of voters. Now, what's interesting is uh, the AFD. So let's look at the AFD for a second. And uh, let's actually dis look at their policies. Because this is actually pretty interesting. So if you look at most of these far-right parties, uh, okay, they're typically nationalists, they're populists, they're Euroskeptic, they're conservative morally, but economically, they have some of the most liberal plans. Unlike most far-right parties, this party actually, like, you know, is, could be considered right-wing because all their policies are more conservative. For example, they do not want, uh, they want um, more Germans, quote-unquote, to produce more Germans. They want, uh, they want to um, stem uh, to stop immigration. They want to uh, reinstate national family values. So even though Alice Weidel, Vidal, Alex Vidal, uh, is a lesbian, uh, she actually is a lesbian. She has a domestic. Um, uh, uh, she is in a civil union uh, with uh, her female. Uh, counterpart. Now, guess what? She is technically. Uh, now she like you know her official position of her party is actually that she opposes uh, same-sex marriage, prefers civil unions, and also does not want uh, gay couples to have like you know adoptions. So it's really weird because, like, you know, even though they have this moral right wing, they still have these people leading their party, which is very interesting. So um, if you look at, like, you know, their values, they're actually the truly first right wing, like completely right wing party. Like if you look at the front national front in France, they aren't actually right wing. If you look at the national front, the national front, they could say they're right wing all they want. But in reality, like, you know, they're actually not, uh, they aren't actually a, uh, they aren't actually, um, uh, right wing on economic issues or in terms of public spending. For example, economic nationalism involves much, uh, government funding for infrastructure for, um, uh, private, uh, uh, typically in the United States, what is called private enterprise, they favor an expansion of the bureaucracy, and they want to give more public sector jobs. That is not what the um, that is not what a lot of people uh, uh, who are right wing typically support. Like you know, me as a conservative, I don't actually support many of these values. Sure, I may, like, you know, favor some limits to 
uh, immigration. Sure, I'm extremely Eurosceptic, but I would never propose, like, you know, increasing the bureaucracy, bureaucracy and making things much more complicated. But uh, in terms of... Uh, in terms of uh, the so basically like you know in my opinion like you know I actually think that the alternative Germany is actually the first truly right-wing party to emerge in Europe like you know if you look at the five-star movement it's made up a bunch of uh, socialists who are nationalists but they also want to promote like you know communalism not communism but communalism and they are actually like you know quite different from modern uh, from uh, uh, like they are actually quite similar to like Bernie Sanders in a sense, except they're much more nationalists uh, in terms of their nature. So this is actually like the first right wing party to gain the like significant amounts of power in the government. So that's the uh, that is the German federal election. The next thing I want to talk about is the U.S. national anthem protests. So let's um, talk about like you know how this began. So it all began with this guy, Colin Kaepernick, and basically he um, during the national anthem he knelt instead of standing, and a lot of like you know right wing uh, activists thought that this was not fair, this was offensive, and like you know. Honestly, like, you know, why should you do that? That's a terrible thing. But, you know, he said, I'm protesting racial inequality and police brutality. Okay, that's great. But, like, you know, you're in the NFL, whatever, and, like, you know, President Trump, like, you know, then-candidate Trump actually, like, you know, complained a lot saying, oh, this guy's not patriotic, he shouldn't play there, he should get fired. And since then, uh... He decided, like, you know, he started this movement. And now more and more and more and more and more people are, like, you know, uh, kneeling uh, uh, before the anthem and then, like, you know, rising during the anthem. So um, now President Trump has gotten involved. And that's when things started to get uh, messy. Because he talked about, like, you know, he basically said, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. He's fired. But, like, you know, I mean, like, you know, I understand his frustration. Like, you know, me personally, like, you know, I feel that, like, burning the national flag, like, you know, kneeling during the national anthem, like, you know, I find that personally offensive, but I wouldn't say to anyone, like, you know, get that son of a bitch off the field right now. I wouldn't say that for many reasons. Uh, number one... Because, like, you know, your job as the president is to um, say that everyone has the right to say what they want to say and the right to protest where they want to protest. And honestly, like, you know, if you look at, like, you know, the white nationalists or the KKK or the Westboro Baptist Church or even, like, you know, those who burned the American flag, a Supreme Court case that was settled about, like, you know, 10 years ago, I believe, a decade ago. You have the right to do these things. The problem is, where do we draw a line in terms of free speech between what is offensive and what is not? Like, you know, when do we draw the line between people, like, you know, calling for violence and people uh, are actually, like, you know, not engaging in civil discussion and, like, you know, people who want to legitimately protest? That's one issue that I'd like to post to you. Uh, comment down below. And another issue that i like to post to you is this. The NFL is technically, like, you know, working. Like, you know, when you protest during the NFL game, you are working for the NFL. You're in a workplace. And, like, you know, like, you know, this kind of ties in to uh, um, a case that is coming up to the Supreme Court. Do constitutional protections apply to your workplace? So, for example, uh... I, like, you know, the, the case that goes up is saying, like, you know, sexual orientation should, like, you know, be, uh, uh, should a sexual uh, orientation be, uh, should you discriminate based on that uh, because the, the Civil Rights Act and the 14th Amendment do not say, like, you know, say that you can't do that. 
but the thing is, like, you know, there's a huge difference between, like, you know, rights, like, you know, I'm, I'm just analyzing this purely from a legal perspective, like, not from a liberal conservative moral standpoint, but in terms of, like, free speech and, like, you know, uh, civil rights, there's a huge difference between public discrimination and being discriminated in private. And what I fear is that when the government starts getting inter like interfering in private businesses, that is when it's kind of stepping over the line. Because as of now, there's no specific provision in the Constitution that says you are protected from employment, uh, from being discriminated based on all these factors when you are applying for a job. There's no specific clause in there. Nor does the Civil Rights Act give uh, protections when it comes to uh, this specific issue. If we passed a law, like, you know, saying you can't discriminate based on this, you can't prohibit freedom of speech in the workplace, then I'd totally be in support of that. But, like, you know, when it comes to these players, like, you know, from a legal perspective, I'm not sure if legally they have the right to protest while they're working like you know if you get what i mean like you know i, I totally support their like i don't support their argument necessarily like you know colin kaepernick's making millions of dollars but i don't necessarily disagree with their right to protest i just want to make sure that they're doing something like you know firmly on a legal basis and the finally and the final thing that i'd like to talk about actually uh, is Antifa. So Antifa has been uh, Antifa and the white nationalists, like you know, if you think about it, are actually uh, um, it's actually a big issue because I think that Antifa is worse than regular Trump supporters, like. If you look at what they stand for, they are essentially, like, you know, as Dinesh D'Souza said, they're the modern-day Gestapo. Like, for the left. The right, they have their own nasty people, like, you know, the white supremacists. They're terrible. But what the media doesn't want to tell you is the left, Antifa. And, you know, uh, what's interesting is that there was this position... For the White House, asking that Antifa be declared a terrorist organization, and like you know, they do intentionally and in use indiscriminate violence as a weird way to create terror or fear, and this is actually very dangerous. Uh, Antifa may be a um, uh, Antifa is actually like you know, uh, in my opinion. A very dangerous organization I think that it should be condemned as well as the white supremacists I think like you know Antifa could actually be potentially worse than the white supremacists but like you know nonetheless like you know both sides are terrible but like you know when you're using violence to fight for justice that isn't the right thing to do for both sides like you know I prefer if I want I prefer talking with like you know a left-wing activist having a civil discussion with them rather than fighting them because fighting people is only going to result in more violence so like antifa is actually a very dangerous organization uh so are the white supremacists like you know if you look here you know white supremacists they're also very nasty bad terrible people um so we need to like you know be extremely careful in these situations but yeah anyway uh i hope this helped in terms of uh, everything i hope that um you are continuing the conversation uh please 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 go to the common chat so the common chat And
please, please, please subscribe. Thank you. Thank you.